Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the Power Shift Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which every unit in our starting deck gets its power set to its provision cost. That means that a ton of high provision but low power cards are suddenly significantly stronger than usual, and that works especially well for the archetype that we're about to use. So let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Northern Realms Royal Inspiration Grace Knights deck, because in this event, since every card is getting its power set to its provision cost, there are some cards that are going to benefit a humongous amount from that change. Most significantly, the Maiden Shield, because with a Grace ability, when the card hits this amount of power, it will trigger that ability. And since the Maiden Shield is going to start on 9 power, it is going to immediately spawn in Bronwyn the Bold as soon as we play it. So that's great value, and it means just one small boost, in fact, one charge from our leader ability, and we can immediately trigger that Grace 14 as well. So that is the name of the game here, is just trigger as many Grace abilities as quickly and easily as possible. So that's the most significantly affected one. Raynard, I mean, he gets one more base power, so it's slightly easier to trigger his Grace ability as well. Other than that, we also have the Knight Errants, slightly easier to trigger this Grace ability. And the Redaining Knight, also a little bit easier to trigger that Grace as well. So that's generally what we're looking to do. And then, of course, we also have some other cards that are just generally really good in this seasonal event. Triss Meteor Shower, perhaps number one on that list because since every card has really high base power, she is just an amazing finisher. Either in your range row, if you line up everything for a big boost on your side, or if your opponent has a ton of big cards in the same row, you can play her in the melee row for a ton of damage. So that is just an amazing final play. Vandergriff for Resilience, and this is another one that has a Grace ability as well, and uh, because he's starting at 9 power, means it's pretty easy to get the carryover from round 1 into round 2. You get that automatically from the Resilience he starts with, and then either Leader ability or a few other boosts, and you can get the Resilience going into round 3 as well. Other than that, we have Ache for Tall Removal, since they're a bunch of tall cards. We have Vincent, who... As long as our opponents don't boost one of their big units, can give us a ton of value as well. And for additional boosts on our side, we also have Visigoda, who, because he's going to get starting at uh, 8 power in this event, much harder for them to remove. And then other boosters like Tamarian Drummer, and recipients of those boosts, the Trident Infantry. And we'll use, for Finisher, cards like Redanian Elite, which are suddenly better than usual as well as the griffin was a ranger to pass over the boost onto another card and this is another way to uh, set up a very quick grace trigger so that's just about it from all that stuff the one addition to that being that we don't have any special or artifact cards in our deck so we can use Renfrey, which is amazing, of course, and probably going to want to use her as a finisher, especially because we have a really, really strong leader building in this event, so we can get tons of value from Royal Inspiration, and it might take some time to find the opportune moments to use this. So for that reason, Renfrey probably makes sense at or near the end of round two or round three. So, of course, with her, you replace your existing leader ability, which is why we want to use Royal Inspiration as much as possible first. You get the active ability with the curse, and on that side of things, I mean, situational, which one you're going to want in that the instance in which you're playing her. And on the blessing side of things, the passive bonus, probably going to want to get something that is more tempo based, like the cooldown. If you're playing Renfrey early is great, but since you're probably going to play Renfrey at the end, that is almost never going to be the best option for you. And similarly, stuff like whenever you play a unit, if Renfrey is the last card you play, then that's not going to give you any value at all. So just bear that in mind that there are definitely some things that are going to be preferable if Renfrey is one of, if not the very last card that you play. So there's look at the deck, and overall it is quite simple because it's knights, but much of the setup is done for you by the seasonal event. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here, and they'll go first. Okay, and we don't want to have Nickers in hand, so let's get rid of him. And outside of that, this looks okay. Maybe we dump a Redanian Knight. Trist Meteor Shower, certainly nice pickup. Okay, Siri Dash. We would like to have an answer for that 
as quickly as possible now. With the veil, I mean, that wasn't really going to be a factor for us anyway. It's more just a matter of do we have toll removal, which we do not unless we use Triss Butterflies to get us. Cake. Do I think that's what we're looking for here? Yeah, Vincent wouldn't work anyway now that she's boosted. So I think that's top priority in that case. Let's swap out. Possibly even this Temerian Drummer. I'm not sure we're going to have enough time to benefit from him in this round because we go and grab you. We have a lot of other things that are going to be very high priority. Now, actually, by using Triss Butterflies to get Ake, he goes up to 11, which means he may be answerable here. Usually, he's at 8, which is really convenient because the Geralts can't really touch him there. But we are somewhat at risk of not being able to get rid of you if they are able to shut him down. They might have Lock as well, of course. That's possible, but they're certainly eyeing him. Okay, it's self they'll use leader ability to give him the zeal so they can answer him that way. Presumably. Yeah. Not exactly the way that I figured they'd do it, but it does certainly work. And now we may no longer have a good answer to that. So, I mean, this is it's looking a little bit like our original Siri Northern Realms decks, but maybe... I think we might make this round short in that case. Focus on the carryover from Vandergriff. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of scary having three nines in the same row. So we'll play him melee row instead, I think. So it would be nice to line up a bunch of cards to set up a nice Triss Meteor Shower. That is a humongous point slam, but I think with the intention of keeping this round short, that might have to wait for a future round. Okay, Kyrak City Guard is an engine. There's the card draw. Now, the reason why I want to keep this round short is because if we do, we can make that additional card draw less significant. And because we have the resilience, we can pass this round early. Okay, so we do have still some really big engines here. Visigoda, chief among them, perhaps. And the Maiden Shield can work really well with that. I love this because the Grace 8 immediately triggers. So that's really useful. And then, as for how we get Bronwyn boosted up, that's maybe a slightly different question. We might want to dump Squire. Knight Errant. Okay. And dump you, well, and get the same thing. So the thing here is that we're both on 10 cards, yes. We got the carry river from Vandergriff, and if he gets up to 12 power, then we get more resilience on him, which is why we set ourselves up more effectively than they did. Okay, they're gonna... Oh, yeah, well... Well, okay, they're not gonna immediately use Margarita. That's kind of interesting. There's a decent case to be made for locking Vandergriff, but maybe they're keeping their eyes peeled for a better alternative still. So, for example, if we were to drop Visigoda, that would probably be what they'd go for next. It's not a bad idea for them. We could, especially since we know we'll replace our leader ability with Renfrey, we could get really aggressive here. And we could go Maiden Shield, which our boost is enough to trigger the, the Grace... And with our leader ability, and then use the second round on Vandergriff as well for even more carryover. I think we do that. So now we get the resilience back, so he'll carry over into the next round, and we can use Bronwyn as well to increase our boosts. And she's immune, so she can't get locked. So it puts them in a tough spot here. 
And again, we're willing to use that aggressively because, well, not only do we get the additional, although weakened copies of Royal Inspiration now, we can still replace that with Renfrey if we'd like. Okay. Baffert's Vengeance. Are they going to put the zeal on it? They might. It's a lot of Siege Masters. Yeah, they are. Okay, so that's their tempo play, basically. They do hit Broadwind. That is really unfortunate for us. Really unfortunate for us. Now, technically, her Grace ability is still active because it activates when she reaches 5, and uh, she gets lowered back down below 5, then that's actually still fine. So we can double down on the boost on somebody. Not necessarily sure we have a an ideal target as of yet. We may... Considering that something is going to get locked, is likely to get locked if we play aggressively here. Like, Raynard would be good early, yes, but he could get locked. Maybe he's lock bait, though? It's not quite enough from Royal Inspiration unless we go Bronwyn and then Leader Ability after that. That honestly might even be worth it. Uh, wrong order of operations. Wrong order of operations. They should absolutely lock him now. Okay, they're getting Boltes Pride back here. I mean, if they get rid of Bronwyn, it's actually not a huge deal, but... The question is, will they mess with Raynard? We actually can still make this work, I think, with uh, Griffin Witcher Ranger. How many cards do they have here? One, two, three, four, five. So we can pass over five boosts to get you up to 12. That looks like that works. So I think we do that. A misplay, yes. But ultimately, should be able to make it work now. Should probably use this immediately. Because otherwise... Oh, also he's going to get the double boost from Bronwyn there. So yes, we do benefit from that. Should probably use this immediately though, because again... Margarita could very well shut it down if we wait. It's not the biggest play, of course, but the big thing was more so just the Griffin Witcher Ranger. Now, are they going to target Raynard with removal? They might. We could double down even further with another Ranger and do the same thing. Or Visigoda. I mean, the intention of playing Raynard early was so that if they do lock him, we feel safer playing Visigoda. So we don't want to get stuck playing this at the end. Okay, Reinforced Ballista... There's the lock. Okay. Expected that at some point. In some ways, expected it to happen a turn or two earlier. But now I'm I'm thinking we might even go... Well, it's, it is safer to play Visigoda. Do we try to save him for round three? Or do we say, really short round three, we're just going for the Renfree Slam and that's it? Possibly. Possibly. Would go Visigoda now. I'm also looking at Knight Errant is tempting. That's technically also two points per turn. If we play him in between these two. Although if we are, again, if we're going to play Visigoda, we want to play him as early as possible. I mean, same for Knight Errant, though. So maybe we do this. Okay. Gets rid of Bronwyn. Unfortunate, because if we were going to use Triss Meteor Shower, then we still could have gotten a pretty big boost on her. But she does go down. It's going to take a lot of effort if they want to get Raynard... And the Maiden's Shield damaged here. That's why Outright Removal is probably their preference. If we are going to play Redanian Knight in this round, that is also a card we'd like to play as early as possible. Because this generates value over time, this generates value over time. Everything else could be a last minute slam if necessary. Is only one point per turn, whereas this is two points per turn. I think we might break out Visigoda now. It's later than I would like to play him, yes, but I think it's still enough time here that we can still get value from it. Now, do, have we seen Sunset Waters moving in their hand? We might have. That might be about to come out. So otherwise, we've been doing a good job keeping pace, but that could change things. Going after Visigoda now. That does make sense. So, 
one more boost on Knight Errant is going to give shields to Raynard and Maiden Shield. So, I mean, that's going to happen automatically at the end of our turn. Don't really need Visigoda to make that happen. We could go... Yeah, I think we're looking at probably Redanian Knight here, then. Not one of our higher value cards, no, but as we were saying before, the earlier we play it, the better. And because if we can get this up to Grace 8, we do get a little bit of extra value as well. Might as well go that route. And we are close to getting there. Okay, ooh, Witcher Trio. They get all of them out, they do. Oh yeah, they... Still have the damage. We might have wanted to put Redanian Knight here next to Knight Errant for the shield. And the movement... Oh, from Kyrak City Guard. Yeah. I mean, they can. They can do that if they want to. It means this is probably the last turn they'd like to play. Maybe they were just trying to go long enough to get the Witcher Trio out from their deck. They got the extra reference Vengeance charge. They want to use Kyrak City Guard at the end of the round because now it's no longer getting boost. Then again, you know, shutting down our boost on Viscota is... Two points per turn versus one point per turn, so that is still beneficial for them. So... Huh. I'm thinking it is a Vincent's turn here, and technically... If we get one boost on you somehow, we can still trigger the grace, which we could make happen with Griffin Witcher Ranger. That is something we'd like to wait to do, ideally. So I think it's Vincent, and I think it's Rafford's Vengeance. It's not quite enough pacing-wise, unfortunately, even after this boost here. But, let's see. They may opt to pass here. They'll go for Ronvid for more carryover, though. And a decent point slam, no less. There's the humongous Sunset Wanderers. Okay. So what I'm eyeing now is we might even go for a, a damaging Trist Meter Shower in their range row. Is that... That would give us a lot of value. We also have Griffin Witcher Ranger now with a fully loaded row. He is worth a lot. So I'm thinking we go here and we can at least trigger this grace. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> then this. They almost had an amazing Igni there, but they opted not to go that route. They're running out of space. Sayer Kwan. We cannot really stop here unless we ren free and see what we get, which may be worth doing at this point. And I think Triss is definitely going to be for damage here, so it doesn't matter too much where we play ren free. Probably like to go melee row because we have a lot of stuff. Right around 14 power, which is kind of scary. In case they do break out Nigni. We do not have any bronze cards. Stratagem. Damage enemy. Excess damage to adjacent enemies. Oh, it's so close to taking you out. I think we go that route. And then we see if we have split random damage. We might be able to take out Sayer Quan that way. I think that's what we go for. If we go here. And it does destroy Sayer Quan. That's huge. Okay, so what is their last play here? I'm pretty confident that... I mean, if they pass, obviously we can twist Meteor Shower and that'll be more than enough. We will have the carryover on Vandegrift, which is big. Whereas they will not have that. They could pass now and go for the card advantage, in which case it's basically Vandegrift versus them having one extra card. But I think we actually prefer that they do that. Because now... I, don't think that's really changed much. We can definitely still pass them. Except that now we don't have to worry about going a card down in round three. So I still think the damage is the way to go here. Definitely enough. And we still have the carryover on Vandegriff. So definitely not a perfect round. Made a small misplay or two there. But we do still avoid getting a 2 0 there. And I think we're looking good for round three. Okay, so I like Motza. Let's just see. What would we draw into with... Well, then again, we don't have great options to draw into with her. And we might have scared them off with the Vanderriff carryover. This might be a rage quit. 
hard to say for certain, but either way, we'll take the win. All right, so going up against Scoytel here, and they'll go first. Okay, so looking like a solid hand here, outside of how we have Roach and Nickers, who we'd like to both get rid of, but otherwise, lots of golds here. So I do like the looks of that. Okay, it's Matic from hand first. That's a little odd. A little odd. I think we can definitely expect some red hazes then. Why don't we begin with... An engine of some variety here, that being Redanian Knight, or maybe even Squire to set up a Redanian Knight. Might want to do that. Use Squire on uh, Knight Eric, though. Yeah, let's go. We'll do Redanian Knight first. Get your boost started. Okay, Dwarven Skirmisher, that is unfortunate damage. Also, not the most valuable dam damage there on Matic either, because that's probably a card they're going to get back into their graveyard and replay. Next time they play a bomb, but now, I mean, the plan was Squire into Knight Errant to put it next to Redanian Elite, but that's no longer going to be boosted, so that's not as ideal. Huh. What is our tallest or highest provision cost card that we would draw into... With Mata, it's a 9, and we definitely don't want it to be Roach, so that's... Board of Operations-wise, I'm not sure if Mata will draw first, or Roach comes out first. Mata might draw first, so we definitely don't want to do that yet. So let's go... I think we will still... Do Squire, or we could do Maiden Shield. Let's go Squire into Maiden Shield. Tell you what, we'll do that. And there is Matic. Now, how committed are they to destroying a for Power Squire. Because if they just use Matic, then they're presumably... Yep. Okay, I mean, uh, if you insist, it is it is unfortunate. Would have liked to have had that order ability. But we can still use Maiden Shield here and get Bronwyn out. So that might still be our play. And then we could even, if we wanted to, immediately... Use our leader ability. Actually, is that enough by itself? You're currently in 9. We need to get you to 14. It is just enough. Ideally, you like to wait to do that until we have uh, someone we'd like to put that ability on with Bronwyn, like Proud of Tree or maybe Knight Errant. So it's a little bit greedy, but we'll wait a turn before doing it. Okay, Giant Slayer on what? Roach. Yes. Okay. I mean, we uh, can't really put Knight Errant next to Roach all that easily because it's going to damage Knight Errant, so I'd rather not go that route. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what we do there. I think now it's a question of is it Trident Infantry or is it the Knight Errant that's going to be the recipient of this, or rather of uh, Bronwyn's ability here. I think it might actually be Knight Errant, because then we can chain some Royal Inspirations together. So let's do this. Then let's do that. Then we can do this. And then we can boost you by four is enough to get you up to grace. Certainly enough, because we have the extra boost ability now. Sure. Now that means we're getting Royal Inspiration back again. This time it's for three. Unfortunately, is not enough for the Redanian Knight. The reason why we're willing to be so aggressive with that is because we know we have Renfri. So we can replace this leader ability with a new one. And it means we might be willing to throw a three-point boost on Roach if it's the difference between Roach surviving or getting destroyed and setting up some resilience for them. Okay, they'll flip their stratagem and use Matic. 
And they, well, actually, they're going to immediately destroy Roach here. Yeah, they have the damage to make it happen. That will be sufficient. Hmm. Uh, we could... Could use Vincent to drop you down to a 1. I mean, there is still something to be said for any resilience is still significant because it means they might not need to play anything in round 2 if we're just planning to dry pass, but... Huh. Hmm. It's not the highest point, Vincent, but we can't really use it on Matic. Otherwise, Matic, they just use his order ability and they basically mitigate all that damage from Vincent. So, I think we might still be looking at this. I think we might still be looking at this. And now, for what it's worth, if we go Mata, we're going to draw into a 9, and that might even be a... Uh, our Vandegrift for our Resilience, which would be more power than theirs. Ooh, that is very well done. That is very well done right there. They lined it up for the Igni. Now, Vandegrift has a 9. It's either Vandegrift or Triss Butterflies would be what we'd get with Mata. That by itself gets us up to 32. We no longer have any engines going because they just removed them all. Darn is three extra points that's still just 35 could we catch them in one turn if we needed to we could with Tris meteor shower or renfrey possibly even with uh vandergriff i think we still take our chances here ideally looking for vandergriff i mean just butterflies not not bad either we can use this to get vandergriff if we really wanted to we'd probably still like for them to play one more turn and they do Okay, Ake, right now, is capable of removing Mata, and only Mata. What do we think about going... I mean, that presumably means they're going to play one more turn, right? What if we go Triss Butterflies, use this to get Vandegriff in hand, but then still anticipate that we are not going to play on our next turn? We'll let them win round one, they'll get the one point of carryover, but then we'll use Vandegriff as our throwaway in round two, and we get carryover going into round three it's probably still a net win for us i think we can settle for that i think that's okay not to mention vandergriff is now at 12 after the setup from tris actually it's instantly going to trigger his grace but would have been nice if it didn't that way we could potentially still chain some more royal inspirations they get rid of Triss Butterflies in this case, but that was to be expected. They get rid of one of our nines. They have to play to do that. So we'll get Matic back out. I guess they're they're leaning on a short round so that they can get the carryover from Matic with 10 points, and they're assuming that's going to be enough. But of course, 12-point Vandegrift is worth more than that. So I think this is probably where we pass. Now, could we potentially still make this work? Vandegrift at 12. Gets us to 41. Are we still within striking distance? Technically, we are on our next turn if they were to pass. We could Renfrey or even Triss Meteor Shower, which would be sufficient. Question is, how comfortable are we dropping Vandegrift when they might have an answer for him? I think they've used most of their answers thus far. So maybe we're okay with that. Maybe we are okay with that. Deliberately going to play him not all the way to the right in case they have Brahim to destroy the card that's in the rightmost spot. We'd much rather lose Nickers than Vandegrift. Okay, now it's Geralt, professional. Oh, yep, and that's why. That's why I was saying maybe Vandegrift still may not be safe. They're committing big time to this round here. Again, I think that's because they're relying on that Matic carryover. They think that's going to be enough. Now, Renfrey is, of course, a huge point slam force. Have we seen... Oh, yeah, they're definitely not a Renfrey deck. Not with all those bombs as well. So it's not like they're going to have this kind of huge finisher as well. Now, Triss Meteor Shower in a short round is definitely not as good, so that's that's not great. But I'm thinking we pass here and we have at least a, a medium-length round. Are they going to try to push in round two? They might try to go for the 2-0. It's possible 
Honestly, that's probably their best play here. Because short round three is definitely in their favor now that we don't have that resilience from Vanderbrith. Okay, so we draw to Ake. That's nice. Our little bronzes. Now, if they do dry past, we'd kind of like to have a throwaway. But for bigger cards, Raynard and Viscota are the ones that we're missing here. So I'm thinking we have boosters. Not really. So I think we dump you. You're not a bad finisher in a longer round. But we might still look to do a little more than this. Okay, well, Redeem Knight is definitely not as good. They will try pass. Okay. So in that case, I'm thinking it's might even be Squire. Technically speaking, this is worth more points than well, about the same amount of points with Redeem Knight, assuming that you do eventually trigger the grace on him. It could. There's still some potential there to chain grace abilities, get one more round out of our leader ability if we do trigger this grace with it, so I think I think we do still go Squire here. The Retaining Elite, not amazing, but it's a 10-point slam with no setup, so it's a nice last card to play in a round, which is something that Northern Realms otherwise sometimes isn't great at. Now, granted, we could potentially finish with Renfrey, so... And Trust Meteor Shower, so maybe that's not a, a huge factor. But fortunately, they did not try to bleed us, which means some of our cards that take a little more setup, like Trident of Infantry, if we can get a means to boost it, might not be bad. Knight Errant would have been great with the Squire, but we did, of course, get rid of that. Um, I'm thinking... Still not seeing the setup for you, though. Right, there it is. Okay, that also would have been great setup, but this can help us trigger our Grace abilities as well. So they did use a ton of removal with Igni, Guild Professional, and Ake. In round one, they might still have a base Geralt, but if they do... It's still not enough to shut down Fisigoda because he's an 8. So I think we start with you. And they... Ooh, hold on. They have used... I thought we saw one making a bomb. Yeah, because Fisigoda is Rolox. So that is a little bit of a concern. We play it slightly safer and go Redanian Knight first. I mean, that's a little more vulnerable. It's also Rolox. And if it loses its armor, it also gets shut down. So I think we might still look to play you first. And, well, there it is. <laughs> it was going to shut you down, it was going to shut you down, which were both the cards we wanted to play first, so it's not a lot we could do to play around that. Unfortunately, it does mean now Retaining Knight is safer. Yes, they might still have the means to uh, move you or just deal enough damage to remove that armor. But we shall see. And I think that's what we're going to see now. It's another bomb. That's why they played Matic. Because they know they're going to get him back. Yeah, this is... It's not the way we wanted to see this round start. But uh, there's just nothing we can do to stop that. Um, so Knight Errants would have had some boosted units next to it. But no longer can we rely on that. So I think we might be looking at... An ache here. And we'll load up in the melee row now, I suppose in preparation for a Triss Meteor Shower. She doesn't boost herself, even if we play her in the range row. So it doesn't matter if we have everything else in the melee row and she's in the range row, we can still boost all these guys. So I think we might be looking at Ake now. And of course, he could remove Matic. That's not really what we're looking for. It's mostly just a proactive play here. So we don't really have the setup for any of these other guys. Could go a slightly earlier with Danny Knight and then put Knight Air next to it, and that's... At least giving it some setup. That might be what we do next. Okay, it's a squirrel. We are not messing with our graveyard at all, so that's not a huge factor at all for us. Still not looking at Matic here for our desired ache target. So I think it is probably Redanian Elite so that we can play Knight Errant next to him and start getting some boosts. Could, let's see, actually, technically speaking, we use Royal Inspiration, that is a boosted card, then we could put Knight Errant there. That's, that's an idea that I think we will pursue. I 
Don't know what they're going to get out of this sorceress, but it might be damage, it might be boosting. Probably prefer if they boosted, because that'd give us potentially target for Ake, but they probably know that. So let's go here. And let's do this. It's not enough to trigger the grace, unfortunately, but it does mean boosted units on both sides of this Knight Errant, so this is now a two-point per turn engine. Which is more than I expected us to be able to get out of him. If they don't immediately address one of these, then they're going to get shields on our next turn, which would be very useful right about now. Next play is probably the Griffin Witcher Ranger to boost up uh, whatever needs it in this row. Okay, well, it's a bomb. Otherwise, they would not have used Matic. It's Red Haze, and it's to get rid of Ake. Okay, I mean, we still didn't have a great target for him. Maybe that was just so they can more safely play whatever their biggest card is. Later on, so they've not addressed this Knight Errant, and so he's going to make it much safer for these, or mostly, this Redanian Elite. And... I think it is. For which a Ranger, and it's not... It's not amazing. Let's see, two-point boost. We go Range Row, actually. We might be able to get you up to an eight. On our next turn, at least. That does mean that's one less card that Triss Meteor Shower is setting up, but it's in the name of getting this Grace ability to trigger. Eh, it's technically speaking, it might have still been better to go Triss then. Maximize this. Okay, it's a waylay. Curious who they go for here. It's actually Visigoda is technically their best target, but they probably don't realize that. Uh, that's also not a bad option. Now we can't pass over the boost onto this Retaining Knight, so no more Grace for you. Okay. Maddox already on the board, so that was kind of odd timing. So, I think now it is going to be Ren Free, Melee Row, and see what we get from her, and then our finisher is Triss, Range Row, boost all these guys in our Melee Row. What do we get here? Damage by 7, destroy an enemy with 10 or less power, problem there's their biggest unit remains Maddox, and that's not a card we really want to destroy. Play Bronze Unit from hand, we don't have any. It's going to have to be this. And then... It's going to have to be this, too. Not great options for the short term. We might wait to use this. Might wait to use this to see if we have a better target, because right now it would be Elven Deadeye, which is still going to damage Matic, which is not ideal. So they can still potentially have a Matic come back out if they have more bombs. Okay, they still had a leader ability charge or two remaining here. They have a Triss Meteor Shower. Okay, that is unfortunate because that means they destroyed uh, our Visigoda. So it's not just like their Tris we're going to cancel their Triss Meteor Shower with ours because we've we can't undo the damage they've done to Visigoda. And they also... Well, they did not reset the Redanian Elite. The problem here is with our Triss. This is definitely now the right play. Let's go for that. Question is... Is it better... Actually, Triss, Melee Row. If we were thinking we're going to damage them, and then Leader Ability would have been slightly better if, if we were planning on going that route. But I think... Three... Again, not sure if they're going to do something to replay Maddox, so I think we're still going range row here. I think we're still going range row. This actually will trigger this grace now. And there is our passive ability kicking in, boosting our high or lowest unit by five whenever we pass, so we do have a pretty large advantage here. They've already played Igni, thank goodness, because otherwise uh, our melee row is absolutely... An amazing Igni target right now. The only Geralt they might have left is base Geralt, but that's still not enough. Okay, their last leader ability charge. They can reset that Redanian Elite. That is big. That's worth a fair bit of value there. No death blow on you, and it's Shiru at 10 is enough to destroy you, but we'll still hold on for the win. So there's a look at a Northern Realms Grace Knights deck for the new Power Shift seasonal event. 
If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.